my name is Andre da Silva. I'm the extension vegetable specialist as part of the commercial horticultural team. And uh, today, uh, I want to be brief, but it's still uh, pass important information about how to prepare for the fall vegetable seasons. How is it coming the next? Uh, how is going to be our next season? Can we grow vegetables in this coming for uh, fall? And what are the crop management practices that we're gonna we're gonna need to do or challenges that we may face? So just to start, I will start to be general uh, across uh, the entire state, and I will talk a little bit about the weather. So if we are growing during the fall season, we need to keep in mind that we're gonna have long growing seasons. Uh, you're gonna have usually planted uh, brassicas such as cabbage, broccoli, some pumpkins. So those are crops that relatively has a long season. You can also grow uh, crops like squash, yellow squash, zucchini, that they are short seasons, but those are usually grown during the summer, not during the fall. Remember, during the fall, we have temperatures dropping. So temperatures start high early season and they drop as crop development. So you need to look for disease that like a dropping of temperature or cool temperature. Particularly this year, we are in an El Nino year. We have, according to the IRI, we have a 90% chance of El Nino. So what does it mean? Uh, the good point of view is we probably will not have some big hurricanes or storms because when we have El Nino years, the likelihood of a tropical system coming from Atlantic or through the Gulf is shorter than when we have La Nina years. So last year, actually the past three years, we had the La Nina year. So this year is gonna be a little bit different because El Nino come with some bad stuff as well, which I mean, it's the possible increase in the disease pressure in our winter crop. So if you remember last year, pumpkin was a very nice season. We didn't have much disease. Yes, some powdery here and there, but this year we're gonna have a more pressure of disease. This is always likelihood. Like I said, it's 90% chance of El Nino, El Nino yet. It can increase or may not be even be El Nino, but so far that's what we had. So just to come on what uh, Amanda just said on her presentation, doing a good spring program for your crops, it's gonna be very important. Working on your integrated pest management will be very important this season because the likelihood of we have a higher pressure of insect and disease, it's very high. So once you are prepared and selected your crop, we're going to need to think about plastic mulching. I strongly recommend the use of plastic mulching for vegetable crops. Everybody that goes through my talks or visit my fields, most of my trials or my research or my, even when I do my extension on farm trials, we try to do as uh, using plastic mulching because it's increased the soil temperature, short the cycle of the crop. So using plastic mulch as a second crop is a good approach for the fall season because you're going to save costs related to uh, plastic mulching and drip tape. It was already proven that it's work. You do have some small, slight reduction in yield, but if you do a proper management, you will not see the impact of the second crop of the second season plastic on your crop. So why would? But to do that, you need to understand a couple points. First, for early planting days, you will need to plant to painting your. If you have a black plastic, you're gonna need to paint your plastic white. How to do that? You can buy any painting. Usually on those, you can find that or any other. Um, store uh, supply stores or egg stores or co-ops you can find those paintings that you can uh, plant the plastic why because you want to avoid that hot temperature of late summer on your crop so if you don't painting it you're going to have problems with uh, high temperatures in your crop you're going to need to make sure as well that you're going to have the ability or the capability to injected fertilizer, it's very important. Usually you do if you have plastic mulching, but if you are a grower that don't have that ability, you will need to do that. And other chemicals. Let's say if you have problems with nematodes, you're gonna need to inject something for nematodes because they're gonna be up in the soil uh, late summer. 
Uh, if you have a problem with some soil-borne disease, you're going to need to inject it something for those diseases, mainly in brassica crops, because you're going to have those pro problems. And uh, to pick the crop to grow in a second plastic, I would say crops that are less sensible for soil compaction. Usually when you're growing uh, in a second plastic, you have a lot of soil compaction. Not a lot, but uh, you have some, uh, more compaction compared to the first plastic. So selecting a crop that is optimum for fall, like I said before, broccoli, cabbage, kale, collards, or pumpkins are very uh, successful on a second plastic. So those would be my recommendations. And remember, this is always related to weather. So that's the reason why I came back to the weather, because if you don't have that very hot end summer, you might be safe on doing early planting days without the white plastic. Still, I would recommend recommend you to plant in your plastic white, even if you don't have that. Because when the way how we are this year with El Nino, the likelihood of you have uh, problems with disease is going to be higher than last year when we were at La Nina. So in that same topic, I would say that we fall within the white fly population alert. Because last, uh, last year, we do had some pressure. It was a good pressure but we are probably going to have a hot and dry summer. While we got a lot of rain this last week and we are expecting rain this week, if we have a dry summer, white fly population will pop up. And that's the biggest concern in uh, South Alabama because white flies move from, uh, from Florida to South Alabama and then they try to migrate to Central Alabama and you don't see much impact in North of part of the state. But just for you to see this year, Populations in Florida. Uh, this photo here is from two, four days ago uh, on uh, South Florida. So the populations are very heavy there, and they're gonna migrate to north parts of southeastern U.S., which include Alabama, Georgia, and even North Florida. So we get that problem with vegetables that they migrated from row crops to vegetable crops, and that's when we have our problems. So just for you guys to understand a little bit how they do is they are starting right now here in South, in South Florida. But as we get warmer and warm, they're going to start to migrate to our locations. And that's where we have the regions where we have most of the damage from white flies. So if you are in one of these regions growing vegetables, keep your eyes open for white flies because you're probably going to have some virus problems because the problem is not only the white fly, but how many virus they they can uh, transmit to our crops. So you can have virus related to cucurbit crops, like pumpkin, uh, uh, pumpkins, it can be a problem, but mostly yellow squash, zucchini, but also in tomatoes. So if you have any of those cucurbits or solanaceous crops like tomato, you will probably see uh, virus symptoms. And there are some of those viruses that were reported in Alabama, others that were not yet, but doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So we need to keep our eyes open for that. So selecting a cultivar that it's uh, resistance to those viruses, it's very important. The next point is what we just talked about the weather, planting dates. We need to select properly planting dates for the fall season. And when we talk about white flies, you don't wanna have, have white, uh, white fly pressure when your plants are still young. So keep your mind, this is the, this graphic show data from 2021. We had some good populations there that increased during September. So that's basically August, September is the, when we have a lot of pressure of these insects. Uh, so you need to keep it in mind because as soon as you're planting your crop, they will be there. So in this video, you can see how much pressure we have uh, in that year in Alabama. So planting early uh, before avoiding that August, September window of planting date, it's very important. So you're going to need to anticipate your planting or delay your planting. Uh, some varieties that has resistance to white fly that I like to say here, it's like yellow squash, grand prize, gold prize, and lioness, and zucchini is the SV0914 uh, paycheck and spineless beauty. Why do I say that? I said resistant, but that's not true. What they are, they are tolerant for some white flies and white fly transmitted virus. We don't have any resistant variety of yellow squash or zucchini, but we do for tomatoes. So those are, this is a list of cultivars uh, that are of tomatoes that are 
resistant to the tomato yellow leaf curl, which is the main virus that uh, white fly transmitted to tomatoes. So just for you to keep in mind what you can uh, select. Uh, another approach that I like to talk, and uh, I collaborate a lot with Dr. A on this, is the use of row cover. This is a strategy not only for white fly, but for uh, the, for most of insects and in, uh and can be used in the entire state of Alabama. If you use row covers, you can, uh, they are uh, temporary uh, pest exclusion systems that will avoid insects to get in contact with the your cash crop. So it's very useful if you are using row covers at this size or in plants that require pollination, you're gonna need to remove it on flowering. And this is the case when happening in yellow squash and zucchini for white flies, you need to remove the row cover. At that point, they don't give much damage to the plant, but it's still, you're gonna have some impact of the insect. And also the use of plastic mulching colors. You can use white plastic or you can use silver plastic as well. Like I said, you can paint in white, but the silver you cannot paint. In. So installing uh, silver plastic, it's very important. Particularly, I was in a couple fields uh, two weeks ago in North Alabama, and they had some uh, silver plastic against uh, trips and aphids. So that's a good way for you, a good integrated pest management for those insects and the virus or disease transmitted by those insects. So silver plastic, yes, it is an option. Uh, just for you to see what it's, uh, how important it is, uh, just for row covers, like this is on uh, zucchini, how row cover improves the yield, due to the reduction in uh, insect damage. Uh, you can see the difference in row cover versus no cover and how it impacts biomass accumulation. So you have a higher biomass accumulation when plants start to fruiting. Consequently, you're gonna have a higher yield. So that's gonna be like the benefit that you have. You have a healthier plant. Healthier plants tend to yield more and be more resistant to the impact of insects or disease later in the season. So if you are spraying for white flies, I like to recommend some products. Those are the best options that we have in the market. x Savanto Prime, and NAC. Movento is also good. And Actara, Baron, and PQZ products, as well as Venom, can work. Just keep in mind, white flies and these, they reproduce very fast. If you have a high pressure or a high population, you might need to spray it very often. Um, Switching gears a little bit of what I would recommend for pumpkin growers, because that's the, their season. That's where you're going to make more profit. So we did some variety trials, and I just would like to show that uh, those are Jack Lantern uh, pumpkins that we evaluated last year in central uh, Alabama. And uh, what I would recommend is the Orange Sunrise Magic Lantern and the Jack is Jacket. There is a number, but it was Jack Old Lantern and Champion were our best varieties. So if you were selecting those, the likelihood of you have success, it's good. Remember, we talked about El Nino and La Nina early in this conversation today. So it might be a little bit different depending on the disease pressure as well. Last year, we didn't have much disease pressure and, and those uh, crops performed the best. Just for you to have an idea, we talked about Magic Lantern. So our top is Orange Sunrise and Magic Lantern. So Magic Lantern here, this is our variety. And the Orange uh, Sunrise is this variety here. So just an overview of what we got. A new uh, variety in the market that it's not new, but came back to the market is the Orange Bulldog. So you see it has a different shape or different color compared to the other ones. So I heard that um, the University of Georgia came back to sell those seeds. So if you are interested in a different pumpkin uh, color, that's an option for you. So just the Jack O' Lantern here. So you can see other different varieties that we had. And then Champion, it's our fourth best variety that for last year. So it's, um, it's a little bit smaller uh, pumpkin fruit. Um, if you uh, has a UPIC facility, you need to diversify as much as possible. So you want a different types of pumpkins. So not only Jack, Jack Lantern pump, pumpkins. So acorn uh, is an option. So those are the cultivars that we evaluated last year. In the next slide, you're going to see the yields of, uh, uh, I mean, the photos of those cultivars. So just for you to know what were the best one, Tay Bell and uh, Mesh 
potato was our top one, but it was not different than table treat and uh, autumn delight. So for you guys to see what we are talking about, that's the mashed potato is the white one. So table, it's a green one. Celebration, it's very attractive for the public. They usually like, but if we come back one slide here, you're gonna see their yields were not the best, but it's chill. You can sell it for a higher price because it's very attractive. It's a flat pumpkin and it's very good for decoration. Some other cultivars that I would like to say of pumpkins are kabocha cultivars that you can grow in the state. We have tested before. I don't want to go uh, all about yields because they have different size, different shapes, and different number of plants. It's going to depend on what you're looking for. So those varieties, Umber Max, Cha Cha, Geisha, Delica, Golden Buddha Ball, the show, show Shit Green, Sunshine, Speckle Pup, Winter uh, Sweet, and Sweet Mama are cultivars that we have tested and we had success in the, in the state of Alabama. So it's there for you guys to use as well. Like I said, if you have a pumpkin patch, you want to diversify as much as possible to attract more uh, customer. And that's going to be something that you need to keep in mind. So just to end up my presentation, the take home message is yes, you can have two crops in a year. Fall season is a challenge, it is. But if you take a good care of your crop, you're going to success. Plants are tough and they can perform well there. Proper crop management is fundamental for the success. And the first step is select of a proper cultivar. So knowing your weather conditions, the challenge that you're going to have and then selecting your proper cultivar, it's gonna be the key for your success. Last year, as part of the commercial horror team, uh, Dr. A, Dr. Rodriguez, and Dr. Sakora, uh, our agents as well, Chip, uh, Dave Lawrence, Olive, and Jacob and I, we released uh, the Alabama Vegetable Cultivar Handbook. We try to keep it most updated. So if you access the Farming Basic apps, it's linked to there. Or if you access the ACES website, you can have access to our Alabama Vegetable Cultivars Handbook, and you're going to see what was already tried here. We are trying to keep it as much updated as possible. So if you don't find something you're looking for there, feel free to contact me or any agent in your area. With that, I would like to say thank you, and I'm open for questions.